In this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have several very interesting publications. At the number three spot is the full publication in the New England Journal of the PARTNER trial. And this component looked at the surgical versus transcatheter replacement of the valve uh, for aortic stenosis. As was uh, reported at the um, recent meetings, the outcomes for mortality were um, trending lower early, but similar ultimately, and meeting the non-inferiority criteria uh, for the transcatheter valve implantation as compared with surgical valve replacement. Now, there were interesting differences uh, with a higher risk of stroke um, by one year, about uh, 5% versus 2.5% for the transcatheter valve versus surgical. But there were conversely more bleeding complications and uh, new onset atrial fibrillation with the surgical uh, patients. And so some differences in the um, comorbidities and other uh, non-fatal outcomes. But this introduces really a big new option for treatment of severe aortic stenosis. At the number two spot is a very interesting paper in the European Heart Journal that used uh, cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, or CMR, to estimate the pulmonary vascular resistance. Now, this is something that's currently done with the right heart cath, but if it could be done non-invasively, might expand its utility in managing patients with pulmonary hypertension. Um, this was done with very careful measurements of um, the right ventricular volumes, ejection fraction, the pulmonary artery flow velocities, areas, and cardiac output. And from that, the investigators derived a, um, a formula to estimate the PVR. And so I think a useful new tool to measure a very important um, medical problem that has many different uh, medical treatments currently uh, available. Now, this week's number one spot is a paper in Jack that's published from the Made It CRT study that links up um, CRT remodeling of the ventricle and the risk of ventricular arrhythmias. So it's a uh, really interesting analysis that found that the good responders to CRT had the lowest risk of significant ventricular arrhythmias, and it was a graded response, and it tracked with the amount of remodeling. It makes very good sense, but it uh, illustrates yet another benefit of CRT, not just remodeling the ventricle and improvement in heart failure symptoms, but also reducing the risk of significant uh, ventricular arrhythmias. So with this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.